Welcome back to a wild selection from our Tempo Storm deck introduction series, featuring Giant's Warlock. Kobolds and Catacombs introduced a few really strong control tools, which allowed for the formation of a brand new wild exclusive deck. This deck was discovered around three weeks ago, but its power level has really shown its prowess in the recent weeks, with multiple players hitting rank 1 legend with the deck. Let's take a look at this relatively new yet extremely powerful deck. Similar to Giant's Hunter, which has been in the wild meta for the past six months, this deck runs the Naga Sea Witch and the Giants package, Molten, Sea, Clockwork, and Mountain Giants. One of the main objectives of the deck is to play Naga on turn 5 with as many zero-cost Giants as possible. This deck differs from Giants Hunter in the sense that instead of using tutors to get a copy of Naga from your low-cost minions, you leverage the Warlock hero power to draw into Naga, passing the early turns of the game. A Warlock deck that utilized the Giants was tested in Knights of the Frozen Throne, but the deck had been too inconsistent with this package alone. The release of Kobolds and Catacombs was saturated with control Warlock tools, and with the introduction of Void Lord in combination with wild exclusive Void Caller and Malganis, the deck falls together when including this big demon package. These cards allow you to play Void Caller on 4 and cheat out a 9 cost demon. This demon package is supplemented by some extremely underused Warlock cards that have been around since the classic set, such as Sense Demons, so that you can significantly increase the odds of having a Void Caller in your hand by turn 4, and Sacrificial Pact, which is a free dark pack that can be used to kill your Void Caller turn 4 and get a 9 dropout instantaneously. With the Giants package, the Big Demon package, and traditional Kobolds and Catacombs control Warlock cards, you have a deck which has reached a critical mass of things that can cheat out big cards on turns as early as 4 or 5, which has been tearing the meta apart. Seeing how wild players are familiar with Giants Hunter, it seems like a good comparison point to understand how its new cousin, the Giants Lock, performs. While the decks are fairly similar in game strategy, one of the major differences that this deck has from its Hunter counterpart is early board clears. One of the main main limitations to the Hunter deck is that while it could consistently get a Naga and Giants turn off, holding the board until turn 5 was always a struggle. Giants Lock does not have an issue with this, as it has extremely strong early game removal in cards like Defile and Hellfire, along with spot removal from the Spellstone. While the Warlock variant lacks consistency in getting Naga out compared to the Hunter one, the addition of the Big Demon package raises the consistency of getting something big out early significantly. Between the Hunter and Warlock deck, the only advantage that Hunter has is that it focuses around the Giants exclusively. Warlock has the issue of consistency, in the manner that their Naga turns are typically less explosive than a Hunter's, where a Hunter will typically get out 3-4 to four Giants alongside a Naga on turn 5, Giant Lock typically gets out fewer Giants at roughly 2 or 3 on turn 5. Seeing how this deck is in its infancy, the vast variety of wild tech cards have not really been tested yet. At the moment, the deck has had a few interesting things added as tech cards, and we can also look toward Giant Hunter to see potential techs that may be good in this. However, the number of tech slots for this deck is actually quite low due to the fact that you're running both the Giants, Big Demon, and Control Warlock packages. With the meta shaping up to have more and more Giants decks, one interesting tech that has been implemented is Shadow Flame. The best way to clear a board of Giants from this deck is to get one out on your own, then Shadow Flame it to clear away your opponent's entire board. Faceless Manipulator is also a good tech choice against slow decks, as being able to copy one of your opponent's cards can sometimes aid you in cheating out your own minions, or get a big threat on the board. It also can be very powerful to copy your own minions for tempo. If you find yourself playing against decks which tend to drop single large threats, like Inner Fire Priest, Blast Crystal Potion is a really strong tech card. If you tend to start facing more aggro decks, there's a plethora of tech cards that help counter aggression. The current favorites among high legend players are Doomsayer, Tar Creeper, Golaka Crawler, and Mistress of Mixtures. Mistress has been the best performer in this spot so far, as the two health minion combos very nicely with Defile. The deck lacks minions with two health, so this bridges the gap from a Kobold Librarian's one health to a three health minion like Voidwalker to allow for full board clears. Due to the recent uprising of this deck, not much is concrete about how to beat it, but many players are trying to counter it at high ranks, as it's very dominant. The deck's worst matchup at the moment seems to be against aggro decks such as Aggro Druid or Paladin. The constant pressure that they can output and reloading with Divine Favor or Jeeves is rather tough for the Warlock to counter. The best way to mitigate this deck as the Warlock is to try and get your demons out early. A turn 5 Naga is not particularly good in this matchup, 
as you'll almost never have the opportunity to play Naga and Giants on turn 5 without a serious risk of dying the next turn. Getting a Void Lord out early from the Void Caller can really put you ahead and seal the game out. Against Malagos Druid, the name of the game for this deck is to put on as much pressure as possible early on and hopefully kill the opponent before they can get enough damage to burn you out. One thing to note about this matchup is that Malagos Druid has started to run Poison Seeds to counter the deck, and it does so fairly well, because it replaces your Demons and Giants with Treants. This tech was initially suggested by Poach in the Wild Tempo Storm meta snapshot at the start of Kobolds and Catacombs, but was recently popularized by Kriparian as he completed his climb to Wild Legend this season with this deck. Obviously, you don't want to have your board turned into Treants, but if it does happen, and your opponent plays Spreading Plague afterwards, you can make a bit of a cheeky play to counter an upcoming combo turn by not killing off the Scarabs. The Malagos combo requires 3 plus board spaces to go off, and Druids have a really tough time killing their own Scarabs off, especially if your board is filled with 2 twos. Reno Priest is also a delicate matchup, as the removal run in Wild is good enough at times to clear a full board of 8-8s. The matchup is heavily reliant on who gets the coin as it's actually the most valuable resource. For the Warlock, you want to Naga Giants on turn 4 with Coin to play around the mass AoE that the Priest has in his arsenal. As Priest, they'll be trying to keep the Coin to kill a Naga board with Light Bomb or Psychic Scream. If the Giant's turn is late, it can also be killed with Shadow Reaper Anduin. One of the main ways that Warlock can win is by initially holding back when playing Naga, only playing one Giant or two if you're feeling risky, into a Light Bomb Scream turn. If the Priest is greedy and waits to get more value out of their board clear, or just doesn't have it, you can punish them really hard with Lothab, preventing them from clearing your board on the following turn. Additionally, waiting until turn 10 for the Giant's turn is also an option where you can combo Naga, Giants, and Lothab at the same time, which is only weak to Shadow Reaper Anduin. Giant's Lock is the new powerhouse on the scene in Wild, and has been making waves in the meta. It takes all the benefits that Giant's Hunter has, and removes a few of its negative aspects, making a pretty sound and frankly extremely powerful deck. We highly recommend trying out this deck, as it showcases some of the really overpowered features of Wild, and does not have a standard equivalent. As always, please leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and join the discussion in the comments below. Let us know what you would like us to cover in our next deck introduction. Finally, don't forget to subscribe to stay up to speed with all of Tempo Storm's Hearthstone news and content.